hey, fellow climber. Glad to see someone else up here at the top. Not often I can lay eyes on another soul this high up. Are you marveling at this brand new record time I just got? No, oh, stop it. I'm flattered. You'll get there someday. Say, how long did it take you? Three minutes? Okay, now that, that's pretty good for most people. But hey, you? I see a lot of potential in you. I cannot just let someone like you with those gorgeous eyes sit here with, what, a three minute time? I'm gonna show you how to get up here in under two minutes, at least. Follow me. All right, soldier, here we are. By the end of this boot camp, you will have all the knowledge necessary to get a sub two, and maybe even more. That is an average of 12 seconds per section for 10 sections. Just listening to me will not get you to your goals. You gotta practice. After you finish this lecture, the first thing you wanna do is install Anjo's mod pack. If you've not already done so, that is. You can find a link to his Discord server in the description. You can use it to track the splits in your personal bests, your best times on each segment, and most importantly, the save state. Save setting is teleporting to a position of your choice so that you can practice a section over and over and over again without having to restart and get back up every single time. You can use them to train the techniques I will show throughout the video. Make sure this teleport button on the enable disable section in the home screen is activated and green. To create a save state, hold control then mouse right click. To teleport to one, hold control then left click. There are also a few pre-made save states which can be triggered with the number keys, but if you want more freedom, just know you can create them wherever you want. Save states are only half of the puzzle. To reinforce what you learn from them, you need to do some full runs without resetting, regardless if the run is on pace for a personal best or not. This will allow you to encounter whatever strategy you just learned from many different angles, as well as getting used to using it in the context of a real run. Throughout the entire tutorial, I will be showing my mouse tracker on screen so that if you are ever confused about how to do a strategy, you will see my movement. There will be a download to it in the description. Lastly, I set up a Fiverr account so that you can get individual feedback on your runs for a low, low price of five US dollars. Again, a link in the description. Anyway, let us begin. The first thing I notice people around the two minute mark do is the pro level task tutorial. It seems to stem from this zoomer culture, which entails doing hard strategies and moving really fast with the drawback of making like six gajillion mistakes per run. I beg of you, do not do this strategy until you are much faster, as it is simply inefficient. If you do not already do it, good. The method I would recommend is the one I'm showing on screen here. The key is to get your pod nice and close to the branch like this so you can get a solid spring over it. If you want, you can even do this 2017 style strategy that former world record holder Luminen used to do in his runs. It is a bit slower, but more consistent for some people. Both of these strategies are much simpler than the task strat, and with practice, you can average 10 second tutorials. At this level, anything under 12 to 13 seconds should be a reasonable finishing time for the first segment. Just keep in mind that if you get too high of a bounce off this branch, you will fall into the pit of mild annoyance. The path for the first half of chimney is pretty straightforward. In most situations, you are probably going to be hanging down from the oar. From here, swing up with your hammer extended with a fair bit of power so that you can basically pogo from the branch, then pogo from the house so you can then spin onto the pipe. Then, you just swing up. Aim to hit the ledge to the left of the barrel. It will offer a much more consistent maneuver to the coffee rock. If you grab to the right of it, you will likely get stuck. If you are in a position where it is comfortable to grab the barrel, go for it, but just be careful. This whole area I just showed you is a huge chain reaction of movements that may seem complicated, but because it is at the very start of the game, you will have many chances to practice it. I see a lot of people around this level use this jutting ledge when they could just easily pull Pogo from the coffee rock. As soon as you grip onto it, you can just pull down hard with your mouse. This will maintain momentum and flow much better, but if you struggle too much with it, then do not bother. It is not extremely important yet. While the first half of Chimney is a straightforward rise to the top, the second half is a bit more convoluted. Norwegian community veteran and former world record holder Reng uses strategies here that I believe are the most consistent for people around the two minute mark. In short, swing up here, shift over here, pogo off this little corner onto the girder, then pogo straight from wherever you land up towards the lamps, and swing from side to side. Sometimes you may have a wonky fail on this initial swing, but you can often save yourself by pogoing off what I call the trash rock. No offense to the rock, of course. Zoomer culture has made some two minute players use top level chimney strategies, which I personally do not recommend, as they might just make the section harder for you. If your goal is to use cool strats without consistency being of concern, well great, that is none of my business, but this video is called how to get sub 2, not how to be blast bolt. Something that got requested for me to cover a fair few times was the construction wall, which is actually a pretty simple section. The primary strat is to simply slam down on the fridge, then do fully extended hammer swings on the grips I am showing on screen here. At the end, you can set the pot down on the balcony and tap yourself into the rail. 
In some positions, you will not be able to make it to this thin gray radiator thing. Just use this ledge below and continue with this alternate route. Shortly after this, however, is one of the most crucial strategies to learn for future consistency and speed. The jump jump is rather hard at first for many players at this level, but it is worth it once you get a hang of the movement. The first thing to note is that your hammer must 99% of the time end up a little to the right of this bar for the tub jump to work. Practice shuffling along the rail so you end up in that position. I'm showing a successful attempt on screen. When you get faster and might have a lot of momentum, you can hit the jump from a little further back. Make sure to keep your hammer extended to increase your chances of clearing the tub and let go of the rail when you are about to bonk your head here for optimum height. You will not have to worry as much about following these guidelines once you get comfortable with it. Your muscle memory should carry you. If you are to practice this with safe states, set one back here. This is because the entire rail will affect how you go into the tub jump. It is a very momentum oriented section. A general tip that applies here and just about anywhere else in the game is to watch runs a fair bit faster than you, but not that much faster than you. These players are the best people to learn from, as they will not be doing anything crazy advanced for your level, but will have a good grip on the things that you currently struggle on. If you watch a lot of runs, you will notice how different people's playstyles are, which becomes more and more prominent as you climb up the time ladder. You can pick and choose strategies that work for you. To give a general outlay of this, here's a chart that shows a person's current PB and what time they should be watching. While it is outside the scope of this video, around the 120 mark you can kind of start going freeform and try to speed up because you have enough experience to know what works for you and what does not. Alright, moving on. Furniture land is generally not a super tactical section at this level, but it can still be a major choking point for some people, just due to how unpredictable it can be. The route I recommend taking is bouncing diagonally to the camera, then waiting for a bit. This allows a consistent setup because otherwise you might get stuck and or get a wonky push. After you land, bounce diagonally again to the right. Once you land on the white couch, just do two small swings to get up to the cabinet area. There's a cool trick that matters much more at faster times where you just pull pogo straight up. Practice it if you would like, but it is not required. A tricky thing to look out for in general at this part of furniture is its high tendency to get you stuck. Try not to get the classic toilet lockup or get caught in this comb looking dresser or even in this frustrating position. If your hammer ends up grabbing behind this chair for example, keep your hammer extended and very gently swing around. This principle also applies here at Anvil after I reached a bit too far. As you can see I did not jump as far as I was and I was a bit more careful. It is a general rule of thumb to move slowly and with an extended hammer when you are in danger of getting stuck. Just keep that in mind. Another area affected by this zoomer culture I mentioned earlier is using the chair at the end of Fernie to boost yourself into orange. This is a fantastic strategy at the sub 130 or 120 level, however you will have a very high chance of failure and it will save very little time if you go for it now. You should just swing over and take your chances with falling in the pit. If you do fall, a neat trick I invented is to slam down and use the ceiling to bounce yourself back down. You can see that I did it in my 105.8 run. So we reached orange hell, eh? What was once the scariest part of the whole game is just another average section. Anyway, I recommend lightly tapping on the table so you can then be in a position to pull Pogo from the first rock. After that, you should aim to land with your hammer on this little flat ledge, and pretty much just slam down to get past it. There are some situations where if you mess up, you can use the slanted rock as a grip like so. In other situations, if you do not get enough height, you can pogo off the same slanted rock. A pretty fun save if you ask me. Lastly, orange is still orange, and sometimes you will simply start slipping. If you do, take from my words in the sub tutorial and just do nothing. Afterwards, continue swinging away. I recommend safe stating orange so you can get used to dealing with failures and also just to get proficient at it. Then again, this does apply to just about anything. The final frontier of orange is this thumb, telling you that you're doing great just before grabbing you and killing your run. You can just feel Bennett's demonic spirit raging within him, laughing as he prolongs your rise to the top. But need not you worry, I can help. Once you swing past the lion head and get to this demon of a hand, just wait for your hammer to fall onto it. If you land on the left side of the actual thumb, you should do a swing to get to the roof of the church, but this is not what you should be aiming for most of the time as it is too inconsistent and is only considered a backup. Most of the time, you will land on top of slash inside the thumb, in which case, you want to do a negative pull. Negative pulls are an extremely important mechanic in getting over at speedrunning. They are very frequently used as a repositioning technique and a way to do certain jumps when your hammer is in a weird position. If you just try to swing over the thumb as you did with the lion, more often than not, you will get stuck. If you snap down a tiny bit with your mouse and quickly move it up, you will do this neat little hop. It has many applications throughout the game and will be pretty useful once you get the hang of it. If you want a more detailed explanation on the movement, I linked a tutorial in the description by community veteran Rossi, who goes over the negative pull in full. 
You will generally have more success if your pot is kind of hanging and not stuck to the right wall. Do not let Bennett get you with this. If you get stuck on the thumb, at this point it is best to slow down and lift yourself over it. With a light careful swing, you have low chances of getting stuck. After you have swung to the top, you simply pogo down. Directly preceding the thumb, the church roof is an underrated optical that messes up a lot of runs. You will notice how the roof is split into two parts, this smaller higher ledge and this flat interior. You should try to hang down from the smaller bit. If you end up grabbing the inside, it will be a great opportunity to practice your negative pulse to reposition as it is much easier to get stuck otherwise. One of the biggest problems with this area at the 2 minute level is consistency. Doing a massive pull pogo then pushing over the tip like the pros might be hard for some people at this level, so they will frequently get stuck or slip. If you want to do it like the top level players, just pretend you are doing a slide skip and then push off the right side of the roof when you are in position. Otherwise, a slower but potentially easier way to go about this is to do a medium sized swing jump and aim to grab the tip of the roof with your hammer. If your paw ends up kind of stuck here and you grab too far to the right of the tip, try to slide out in a very relaxed manner as I taught at Fernie. Aggressively slamming your mouse will just get you more stuck. One final strat you can use is a small swing idea onto this tiny roof grip. It looks dauntingly thin, but you have a bit of leeway because you can kind of slide into it from the higher parts of the roof. If you cannot do any of these strats yet, Safe State should help you out. If you fall into the pit somehow, slowly reach out to the rock next to you and pull yourself up and continue. The reason I say slowly here is that this pit has the potential to get you stuck for quite some time, which is what makes it so troubling in the first place. I'm going to be honest here, I do not have much to talk about with the anvil section. As a player around the 110 to 120 level, there are a lot of interesting nuances, however for an aspiring 2 minute player, chokes should not be too frequent, and the game plan should be pretty simple. For my slightly slower players watching this, you may be wondering how to do this fancy pogo to the hat. The idea is that you use a higher ledge next to you without requiring to do a slow setup, like the one I showed in my sub 10 tutorial. In theory, the jump is pretty simple. Once in this position, you can just throw your hammer straight down. In the flow of a run, you just do circles until you get to this point, and then instead of continuing to smoothly loop around, just sharply pull down. You may not understand it right away, which is why I say again, safe states are your best friend for learning strategies, and full runs are your best friend for practicing what you learned. Full runs will also introduce you to the different ways you can approach said strategy or mess up. Sometimes you will get a decent jump but not quite grab high enough. In this case, the negative pull I taught you earlier can be utilized as a method to recorrect yourself. At the higher levels of the game, these rocks can be very troubling due to getting over its slippery nature. Fortunately, with a few adjustments that lose very little time, they become trivial. Once you reach the first rock, you should do two small swings and loop around on top. A lot of people will try to use this little grip which is faster, but way more inconsistent sometimes. However, in certain cases, you will have to grab it as you will simply not have enough height. Your intuition should help you on that. The idea behind the safer strat is that you grab a nice large ledge without risking any slips. This will then enable you to do an easy pogo that should work just about 100% of the time. If you land on these higher rocks, you can just pogo all the same, do not worry about it. Just try not to go any further right. I don't know why some of you decided it is a good idea to use this pillar strat I invented as a joke a while back in your actual runs, but hey, it is your PB, not mine. These good old frosted balls are another very consistent area at the skill level, but if you still struggle with them, I suggest you listen up. If you feel a bit too far right at this first ball, you can tap yourself over a bit to the left for a more comfortable position. If you are really far right, then do a full swing. If you are really far right, then you should just push back to the rocks and try again. Once in the proper setup, swing left once, then swing left again, then swing left once more. The only difference being that this final swing will not get you from one ball to the next, but instead from the right side to the left side of this little rascal. What some people do here is a fourth swing onto the final ball. However, this is a very risky maneuver, as you risk getting into a very dangerous position where the void is sure to consume you. As soon as you can, pogo over instead a much more powerful and reliable alternative. Then you can swing over the final ball into the next area. There are some situations where you will get blessed by the snowman and fly further over the third ball than I prepared you for. In these situations, you can often pogo immediately, but you may have to improvise when exactly to do so and at what angle. This kind of intuition comes with practice. If at any point you hang down from the edge of these balls, you can push back to the adjacent ball until you manage to climb on top. At this point in the run, your palms are probably sweaty, your knees are getting weak, and your arms are getting heavy, yet somehow you're expected to hit this tiny piece of wood? Madness. This is by far the most heavily requested section by you guys, and I'm here to say that I have a cure to your bucket disease. Once you grab this ledge, do a little hop and land on top. After this, you just pogo and slam down. 
You have the choice of going to the wood and launching back, or you can just grab this ledge if you feel you have the height. I do not recommend it too much as of yet, because it is risky, but if you are on a slower pace and want to save some time, by all means go for it. On a side note, the bucket jump is generally easier when your pot is very close to it, which is why this stop pogo method works. If your hammer grabs the very left of the bucket, however, you're probably not going to make it. Another reason this strategy is consistent is because as my mouse tracker shows, I'm pretty much just going straight down and straight up with my mouse. With a bit of safe state practice, you should get pretty decent at it. Make sure not to go too far in with the initial tap, or else you'll be in a very awkward position, but if you do, I suggest either going left or returning right so you can stop and get a clean jump. Do not get me wrong, the bucket jump is still difficult, so there is a non-zero chance you will still miss it in runs. It is important not to get nervous so that you can catch it on your second try. Just chill out on the ground so you can refocus yourself and look for the opportune moment to pogo up again. And I know I'm saying this a lot, but save state practice will help you out with figuring out how to save yourself. At the end of the day, this game is mostly about muscle memory and intuition you gain from strategies. Some things are easy to teach, but others will just naturally come over time. Mountain is one of the most random sections in the game to some people. A lot of players with PVs even as far as the 2 minute mark do not completely know where all of the pockets are, but if you want to be consistent here, you have to pick a route and stick with it. I suggest starting with this lower pocket and swinging up to the middle. Then simply do another swing into this pocket, and then another swing, and then another swing. Very complicated, hmm. I know. After that final swing, your goal is to land your pod to the left of this middle break section and pogo off of it. This should send you flying to this higher middle grip, just one step away from the end. You should utilize it for a small swing into the final pocket, but if you are too high, you should wait to fall down and grab it. As these two final grips are very close together, you may sometimes end up with your hammer too high. Do not YOLO grab it. Wait to fall the proper distance, then pull up. Now this all sounds fine and dandy, but what if you slip? This inevitably will happen, and you need to prepare mentally and physically. Mentally, well, just keep your calm. People kind of go nuts when they see themselves failing the mountain on a PV pace, but this will not fix your problem. Physically speaking, try to slow down and find the most realistic pocket to hit and extend your hammer. I'm showing a few examples here on screen. If you go immediately, there is a chance you will start a vicious cycle of slipping. If you slip again, repeat the same mental process. Keep cool and search for a save. Notice how in this example I do a little wiggle to reposition myself. This movement serves a similar purpose to the negative pull, a technique to put yourself into a more optimal situation. You should get it in your system for similar situations like these where you kind of just want to shuffle yourself around a little bit. Now, slipping aside, there will be times when you encounter situations on the mountain you were just not prepared for, which is where our guardian angels, the safe state and the full run, are relevant once more. One of the things I love about this game is how versatile it is. You will frequently encounter new situations and through experience, will learn how to adapt to them. Just keep grinding at it, and when something new happens to you, take note of it. And sometimes, the run is destined to die, but that is just the getting over it speedrunning experience. So we arrive at Tower, the final frontier before launching off into the great beyond. The first half is generally pretty easy. Just try not to get your hammer caught in the car or else you will be the laughing stock of the household. The stairs proceeding are surprisingly challenging, with many runners across all skill levels throwing some of their best paces on these slippery scallywags. To prevent slipping, you can wait for a split second or so after you hit the ground to allow Diogenes to settle and get a more solid position for the bogo. For whatever reason, I notice that this slip occurs when your pot is tilting left, something I subconsciously picked up on after a while, but is hard to fix. If you wait, you will automatically tilt right and will have more time to get a consistent jump that is not affected by the momentum you had going into it. After you pogo to the pillared roof, do a little swing to get yourself on top. This movement is analogous to the one I explained at the bucket jump, a little repositioning movement for a preceding pogo. After you jump to dish 1, wait until you hang down from it so that like the stairs, you can get a consistent following swing not affected by momentum. As I taught in the sub 10 tutorial, the extended hammer principle applies for this first maneuver. Once you grab the great block, start moving as if you were to do another swing, then a split second later, slam down your hammer. You will notice that this principle applies to slide skip, as they are in fact the same jump in concept, the pull pogo. Make sure to swing your hammer around quickly or else you will have a chance of getting caught on this white dish. Once you get the height for the next obstacle, wait so you can fall down onto it, and hang. A common mistake a lot of people do is that they aggressively pull on this dish or curl in to do so, when in reality, it is much more consistent and controllable with the extended hammer trick. This movement prevents getting stuck with the same idea as the alternate thumb strat I showed. Just keep two things in mind. If you go too slow, you will get stuck. And also, try not to push off into the infinite abyss. 
Then for the thick dish, just do another wide extended hammer movement and be on your way. While it did not matter too much earlier on in your speedrunning career, you will probably notice that space is quite literally the PB graveyard. Getting all those angles with deadly precision can be very tough, especially when you are shaking on such a fantastic pace. One of the most influential factors to your success at this final split is the launch. This simple push off of the top of tower can make or break your run, so it is imperative you learn how to do it well. You will frequently be lucky enough to actually enter space gravity on the previous swing, meaning you can essentially take a break to position your hammer perfectly. I do not suggest slamming down here, as going with full force will yield a much more inconsistent launch. You do not need much power at all, so gently carry your hammer downward and tap the top of the radio tower. Your goal should be to go straight up and a little bit to the right. There's a bit of leeway with this push, but depending on your angle, you may have to switch up your movement for the first asteroid. Here we interrupt your program to once again advertise Safe States. Space is a segment where Safe States will probably benefit you the most, as it is such a simple section with only a couple of movements where not a lot of variables can influence your performance. Make sure to practice it and reach it in full runs to reinforce your understanding of the segment. Alright, let's continue. For the most part, you will encounter two cases when arriving at this first big boulder, given that you got a solid launch. You will either slightly bonk it, or end up directly to the left of it. The first variant is easier, as it gives you more time to line up your push. At around this point, keep your hammer extended as you push to the left, with the goal being to pogo off of this asteroid. I notice that a lot of people fail this maneuver by going too high, but you should keep in mind that pushing too low from this rock is better than doing the opposite, as you will be able to slowly drift up into a more optimal position on asteroid number 2. With the non-bonking variant of the launch, you can take a bit of a risk, because the best way to proceed is by doing a strong pogo almost directly to the left. As you accumulate more experience, you will figure out how to angle this push depending on the slight nuances of your positioning, but generally speaking, going as direct as possible without pushing downwards is your best shot. If you do not like this strat, there is an alternative that entails pushing off to this kind of diagonal route. Some people find it easy, some people find it hard. You can figure it out for yourself. Proceeding this, asteroid number 2 can be thought of as having two different parts. This flatter lower mini ledge, and this nice large wumpus to the left. Something that caught me off guard for a while is how easy it is to accidentally bonk into the big asteroid to the right when pushing from the mini ledge, which is why you want to push as straight down as possible if in the position to utilize it. Safe state practice will help you with figuring out the angle. Sometimes if you do end up going too far to the right and bonking, just wait a bit until you float up into a good position and swing your way up to the top left rock. If you end up landing on the Wumpus, it is much more straightforward. A powerful pogo straight up and a bit to the right. This pogo will be stronger if you grab a part of the surface that is higher than you. This principle applies to the hat jump as well. If you are towards the higher end of the Wumpus, I suggest using his nice beefy shoulder to push off somewhat to the right. This idea also applies to the higher ledge equals stronger push principle I just taught. What I just taught you is what I consider space's main line, but there are so many ways to fail and so many ways to save yourself. I feel like it would be tedious to show all of the ways off in a single video, so I will leave a link in the description to a document where you can see all the variants for yourself. So there you have it, a comprehensive bootcamp toolkit to help you get a sub 2. I got an example run in the description that incorporates all the strats I showed if you want to use that for reference. If you personally find easier ways to do things than the methods I showed, go ahead and use them. I'm just handing out general advice here, which is why I started that Fiverr page I mentioned at the start of the video. If you want more personalized feedback on your runs, for the low low price of $5, you can have just that. There's more information in the description below. On a side note, the reason I'm not calling this a guide is that you cannot just watch a video like this and become LeBron James the next day. You gotta put in the work. This tutorial should pave the way and give you some ideas, but the grind can still be tough. It is impossible to cover every nuance of every section, as getting over it is more about muscle memory and intuition slash improvisation than it is about memorizing things. I can lead a horse to the water, but I cannot force it to drink. You are the horse, sub 2 is the water. Now go on, make me proud, and get that PB you always wanted. Make sure to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Remember, eat your greens, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace! Peace! <laughs>